You probably know the sound. On a cold winter evening, later at night, coyotes howl, often in packs. In the valleys, in the wooded areas, those coyotes cry out in our urban wilderness. Often the reason behind their crying out is to call the pack in, to rally a family group, bringing them back together again after a period of individual hunting. This Advent, I'm focusing on a series of messages which are called the sounds of Christmas, especially the sounds of crying in the Nativity story. In our reading today, we hear about a cry that starts off for us liturgically this holy season. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Those are the words of the prophet Isaiah quoted by the writer Mark to set the stage today. The person who is crying is John the Baptist. Now one commentator tells us about this prophet crying out. John was a study in contrasts in every respect. From his prolonged isolation to his abrupt public appearance from his rugged wilderness life to his dramatic preaching and baptizing ministry. John was born to a woman who could not have children. He came from a line of priests but ministered as a prophet. And he reached Jewish society by removing himself from it. So often God chooses the unexpected. That is why we should be not surprised when God chooses you or me to be God's voice crying out in one way or another, often preparing the way for God's blessing. The commentator continues describing John the Baptist. Both his training and his ministry took place in an unpopulated area. That might seem like an odd place for the forerunner of the Messiah to set up his headquarters. But it fit perfectly with God's plan. John was not sent to the royal courts of the ancient world to announce the coming of the king of the universe from an obscure family. With a strange lifestyle, he established his ministry squarely in the middle of nowhere. The story of John is not the story of the 1%. It's the story of you and me. John was like, if you will, the coyote out in the woods calling the pack safely home. The sounds of Christmas call us in this Advent season to question what cries we are listening to. Are they God's prophets or are they messengers or messengers with hidden agendas that will harm us? Or are we making up something in our imagination? We hear a cry and we make it into what we want it to be. I helped chaperone a grade eight week long outdoor education trip in the wilderness area of Halliburton. Many Walton folk were on this trip, plus one of my daughters. The adult chaperones slept at night in their separate cabins. The student campers all 
slept alone together in their own cabins. But they had phones if they needed to reach us. One night, another male chaperone and I got this call from a cabin of campers at about 10.30 p.m., long after when they were supposed to be asleep. The cabin were so afraid, for they told us there were bears outside their cabin. These bears were making lots of noise. They were crying out, and the campers were very scared. The other dad and I ran up the hill from the lake to the cabin with our flashlights and our walking sticks. We breathlessly reached the cabin, and we searched and searched and searched for the bears. Guess what? No bears in sight. But we did stand still and listen, and we heard a crying out. We shone our flashlights around, and then we saw those familiar beady eyes reflecting back from the light of our flashlights. You probably guessed it. It was a mother raccoon who was trying to herd in her newborn family together in the safety of a tree. What are the cries you hear in your life today? Do you make them into huge bear-like imaginary troubles? Do you create, ba create bears when they're really raccoons? Fear and uncertainty and anxiety can magnify the cries we hear in our lives. One cold Saturday at dawn during the Christmas break, before of all the development up Bronte Creek north of the QEW, we were called at the office to conduct a wedding. It was at the top of one of those beautiful cliffs looking down on Bronte Creek. This was in our South Halton urban wilderness, Bronte Creek Provincial Park. So I arrived before sunrise. I hiked into the chosen spot they had given me. I was wearing my long underwear and my ski outfit <laughs> to keep warm. I arrived early before anyone else. It was bone chilling, windy, cold winter morning between Christmas and New Year's. I arrived before anyone else, and I was standing there, but I had this feeling I was not alone. I heard a weird crying, a crying sound as if someone was in trouble. I looked and I looked around, and I was the only one in sight, but I could hear the cry every time the wind blew stronger. The day before, we'd had one of those ice storms. Then I realized it was the sound of the trees. They were covered with ice. The wind blew, and they were hitting each other. They were talking to each other. It sounded like they were crying out loud. If this was happening down here on Lakeshore Road, even between Christmas and New Year's, I don't think I would have ever noticed it, for it's far too busy, far too noisy. I only heard it because I was in the wilderness. Sometimes we do need to get away. We need to listen in the wilderness for the cry of a prophet, a cry of someone calling us in, calling us to a message, calling us to action. God sent John the Baptist to the wilderness of his time. I invite you to hear the cry of John the Baptist as we begin this Advent. His cry was, prepare the way of the Lord. The church is magnificently decorated, thanks to worship committee and friends. 
But let's decorate our hearts and souls as we count down to the birth of the Christ child. The invitation to communion today we just heard is one of the cries of Advent. But there are countless others as we move towards December 25th. Let's open our ears. Let us hear the cry.